Hey there, in today's video I will test how a very very basic pre-built Lenovo PC from 2014 behaves nowadays and how it can be upgraded so it's not a sluggish Windows box characterized by a lack of quickness. The main patient in this video is a poor Lenovo ThinkCenter M83 desktop PC. It was first introduced in 2014 and released as an updated model in the ThinkCenter lineup, succeeding the previous generation M82. According to Lenovo, the M83 was designed to offer improved performance, enhanced features, and modern connectivity options for business users. Since its initial release, there have been various configurations and updates to the M83. The main competitors of the machine were models from well-known product lines like Dell Optiplex, HP Elite Desk, Acer Veriton, Asus Pro, and Intel NUC. I mentioned the tiny NUC because Lenovo M83 was available in few sizes, tiny, SFF, and tower. The unit today is a classic tower. These days, a machine of this type can be found very cheaply. There is also a large amount of them on the second-hand market. The ThinkCenter M83 was primarily marketed towards businesses and enterprise customers. These organizations often upgrade their computer systems periodically, leading to a higher availability of used M83 models in the market as they are replaced with newer models. Technology advances rapidly, and businesses often replace their computer systems to take advantage of newer features and improved performance. But the low price also corresponds to outdated specifications. The specs of Lenovo M83 consists of 4th generation Intel Core or Pentium processors, Intel Q85 chipset with Lenovo motherboard, DDR3 memory, Intel HD, AMD Radeon HD or Nvidia GT620 graphics. The specific unit today is with the lowest spec, Pentium G3220, 4GB memory and 500GB HDD. Yes, a mechanical hard drive, not a SSD. Let's run some tests anyway and see how the PC behaves. After that I will upgrade it. The Intel Pentium G3220 is a dual-core processor from Intel's Haswell architecture, which is the fourth generation of Intel's core processors. The processor features two physical cores and it does not support hyper-threading. The base clock speed of the Pentium G3220 is 3 GHz and it does not support Turbo Boost. The CPU is slow, but at least it has integrated Intel HD graphics. On your screens you see results from different benchmarks, using popular and standard tests like Geekbench 6, Cinebench, Blender, Handbrake Video Encoding as well as browser tests Jetstream 2 and Speedometer. The results are expectedly bad, but what they can't show is the pain of not having a SSD. Every computer operation is very slow. Startup of the Windows, starting an app or just opening a folder. It was a lot of pain until I run all the tests. Let the first step of the upgrade be the processor. I have several CPUs from this generation. Prices are low these days, so there's a lot of variety. I put a Core 54570S. It has four physical cores and supports hyper-threading, offering four cores and eight threads. This difference in core count and hyper-threading capability provides a significant performance advantage. The Core 54570S has a base clock speed of 2.9 GHz. However, it can dynamically increase its clock speed using Intel Turbo Boost technology, allowing it to reach higher frequencies under demanding workloads. For these reasons, the benchmark results are much better. Still nothing special from a 2023 perspective, but still progress. After an increase in raw power comes the turn of the SSD. I swapped the 500GB HDD for a 240GB Kingston SSD. I had this old one SSD laying around, it's not something special, and the prices at the moment of new SSDs are super low, maybe all time low. It's not worth buying second hand. SSDs are significantly faster than HDDs. They have faster data access times, which means files and programs load more quickly. SSDs also provide faster boot times. SSDs also operate silently and generate less heat, consume less power, and the absence of moving parts in SSDs makes them less prone to mechanical failure. And now that we have this upgrade, it's time for the next one. 
If we want to play games with the Think Center M83, we need a dedicated GPU, but there are some limitations to be aware of. Usually the power supply is not very powerful because the computer was not designed for gaming. In this case, it is a 280 watt one, which is not much. Also, there is not available a 6-pin connector from the power supply to power a GPU, which requires the connector. The PCI Express connector on the motherboard, in which the video card is placed, can provide a maximum of 75 watts of power. There are some GPUs that don't require external power like NVIDIA 1030 for example. I have several such cards but we come to the last limit. The back panels of the case. Some cards don't fit. I am showing you an example where a NVIDIA GT640 from ASUS can't fit, but I have no issues with the more powerful NVIDIA 1050 Ti. With this CPU, the 1050 probably is bottlenecked, but I still decided to run a 3 DMARC Night Raid test and a Cyberpunk benchmark. In the meantime, I also added another memory stick, so the system have a total of 8GB RAM in dual channel. The video card is OEM version from HP, I hadn't seen one until recently, and it's with red PCB. It has 4GB GDDR5 memory, 128-bit bus width, 1291 MHz GPU clock, and boost to 1392 MHz. With 1080p resolution and medium settings, the average FPS in Cyberpunk benchmark is 30. With low preset, the average FPS is 36. I haven't tested other games because I just wanted to show what options there are for upgrading the Lenovo M83. If you are going to play games, it all depends on the video card. In conclusion, I can say that if you need a cheap office machine, the Lenovo ThinkCenter M83 is a solid option. And if you want to upgrade in the future, it is not impossible. Now I wish you a good day or a good night and we will meet in the next video.